Terror came to London today in the heart of the rush hour. It was aimed at ordinary people using the tube, using a bus service. I'm sorry, we've got a major incident here. Sorry, can we move off the road? Four powerful bombs left people dead, dying and horribly injured. Many more had been terrified a hundred feet underground when the bombs exploded. And also there's this explosion, a uh, white, a big white appeared and then it was just smoke everywhere. In the tunnel, we were trying to close the doors because there was just smoke, you couldn't breathe. The worst terrorist attack in Britain began at 8.52 this morning in a tunnel between Aldgate Station and Liverpool Street. We were on there for like 30 seconds and then there was just this explosion in the carriage next door. And, you, and then it was just all the smoke and you couldn't breathe. Seven people were killed here and scores injured. People were forcing the, the doors to get some air in and when being evacuated we actually saw the carriage and the roof and the side just went off, it was on the rails and you literally saw people like the people in the next carriages that were standing next to windows, their, their ears were blown up with blood all over the arms and everything and the, people's, the people that were inside the carriage, they were just literally full of blood and, and, and dark and they were still screaming and the paramedics were there. And... Ladies and gents, we need to clear now Russell Square. Please, for your safety, please start moving down. This, is for your this was just five minutes after the first blast. There had been another explosion underground between Russell Square and King's Cross stations. People made their way to the surface in almost total darkness, some shaking with fear. People started to scream because it was a burning smell and everyone, just kind of long story short, thought they were going to die. People started saying prayers, praying to God, panicking, breaking the carriage windows with their bare hands, anything to get oxygen into the carriage because the more people tried, the more um, distressed they became. But women passing out, um, people started getting very agitated, uh, there was no communication from any drivers, everyone was in pitch black, then the emergency lights came on and more and more smoke started coming into the carriage and we were there for something like 20 to 30 minutes during which the smoke intensified, uh, the screaming intensified, the hysteria and that's what it was, became almost pandem to a state of pandemonium. Scores were injured here and 21 people died. Then, shortly after, a third blast, this time at Edgware Road Station. The explosion was so powerful it ripped through a carriage, a side wall, and into two other trains. The roof had just been blown upwards and outwards. Um, doors were on the, on the track, um, and there was just people screaming and wailing, people are dying in here, help us, help us. And it was just, it was awful. People comforted each other as they walked away. At least five people died here at Edgware Road. By now, a major emergency operation was underway. At 9.33, the entire London Underground network was suspended. At this point, officials thought they were facing power problems. But within an hour, there was an explosion at the back of a bus in Woburn Square. The entire top section was blown off. From the back, there were just a few seats remaining. One minute is bus, next moment the whole thing had just literally peeled off like a sardine tin. People got flung out uh, from the top and there was just debris, there was smoke, a lot of smoke, and then people were just kind of literally staggering around. By now, Scotland Yard knew they were facing what they had long feared and expected, a coordinated terrorist attack on London. Some eyewitnesses reported seeing part of this bus flying through the air. With this incident in particular, police are investigating whether it was the work of a suicide bomber. If confirmed, this would be unprecedented in Western Europe. At least two people died here. Shortly after this incident, the police made their first major statement. Stay where you are. All of London's transport is currently disabled or, or stopped, whether that's buses or trains. So the safest thing that everybody can do is to stay where they are. The police put into effect their long rehearsed plan for dealing with a terrorist attack. 
Three hours after the first explosion, Tony Blair announced he was leaving the G8 summit and returning to London. It's reasonably clear that there have been a, a series of terrorist attacks in London. There are obviously casualties, both people that have died and people seriously injured. And our thoughts and prayers, of course, are with the victims and their families. The police say four bombs exploded today and there were no warnings. These attacks were aimed at killing large numbers of people using public transport. This clearly was a callous attack on purely innocent members of the public, deliberately designed to kill and injure innocent members of the public. The government said tonight this had all the hallmarks of an Al-Qaeda attack, organization, coordination and ruthlessness. We know that these people act in the name of Islam, but we also know that the vast and overwhelming majority of Muslims here and abroad are decent and law-abiding people who abhor this act of terrorism every bit as much as we do. For thousands of people across the country today, there was the agony of not knowing what had happened to their loved ones. We got a call early, early this morning and um, saying that my sister, from my sister saying that, telling us basically what had happened and that, and that, and that she was hurt and that she's, she's on the tube somewhere and that she's at Russell Square but no one's really telling us anything at the moment so we're just kind of, just kind of waiting to see what happens, it's just the not knowing the phones are down. Just to not know, we just want to get through and know she's, know she's safe. Tonight, London was a changed city, largely empty of traffic. People walking home, unable to use tubes or buses. But what was striking was the calmness of the crowds on the day that London suffered. Gavin Hewitt, BBC News, in central London.